Welcome back, Erie High Maritime Program students and fellow boat builders. We're in the BMC Boat Shop, and we're continuing work on this six-hour canoe. I don't know why they called it six hours. It takes about 20 hours to build. So yesterday, the last time we were here, we fit this chine in, and it fit pretty well on that end. Now, we made a mark when we fit the front end in, up here on the top, and there it is. We've, uh, and we lined it up with a, just a random line on the boat, which happens to be right here, that we labeled chine line. And then we pulled the back end out of the boat and fit it and cut it and fit it. And it fits really well right now. And we made another mark on the top of this chine that aligns with this chine line. And recall, if you will, that we measured between these lines and it was this, 14 and 1 16th inch. That's what we need to cut off of this chine so the whole thing fits in the boat properly. Because it's still too long by 14 and 1 16th inch. So what we're going to do today is cut, and we'll do it by hand this time, with a handsaw, we're going to recut this in and cut 14 and a 16th inch off. We took a bevel gauge and we copied this angle, this angle on the front, and we, with a pencil, drew it on the side of the boat so we could copy it, so we could reproduce it. That's why we did that. There it is. And then there's another angle, because remember it's a compound bevel right here. Up like that. And we copied this on the boat too. That's this line, either one of these lines. So we copied both of those angles so we can put it on this piece and cut it with the handsaw. That's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to pull this off the boat. It needs to come out of this notch, remember? We might leave this on for a little while just so it doesn't go flying. Actually, let's pull this off. Set this down. Uh, we're going to try to go straight up with it. That went down. This is coming up. Not too bad. We're going to turn this around so this end can sit on the vise. in here, set that end in here, just to hold it up, and we're going to cut this. Now, we're going to grab the bevel gauge, and copy this angle. And that's why we drew it on the side of the boat. And that's what the bevel gauge is real handy for. It'll look like that. That's the angle. And when it slides into the boat, it ought to hit that real nice. Make sure I have it. Up a little bit. There we go. So, I already measured this 14 and 1 16th inch. I'm looking for my tape measure. Here it is. And I believe that's the line right there. Yeah, that's it. 14 and 16th inch. And I know the slope runs that way, so I set my bevel gauge so this slope is parallel to that slope. And I line this up like that. That's what we're going to cut. I might as well put it on this side too. That's it. Now we'll clamp this in the vise. And we're using this to cut it. It's called a Ryoba. 
It's a Japanese style handsaw and it cuts when you pull, not when you push. And you'll see there's different teeth on both edges. These teeth are pretty small and there's more of them. These teeth are a little bigger and a little bit farther apart. This is for cutting across the grain, cross grain teeth the grain being all these stripes. So if I was gonna cut this off, which I'm about to, I'll use the little cross-cut teeth. If I was cutting with the grain, for instance, if I needed to cut a slot in here, then I would use the bigger teeth, the rip teeth. Now, this is neither, a, it's more of a cross-cut than a rip, but I'm gonna use the cross-cut, cross-cut teeth. Now, if I cut this too long, it'll be too low in the boat. Because remember, we need to have it sticking up a quarter of an inch. If I cut it to a little too short, when we clamp it in place, it'll just be a little higher sticking out of the boat. It'll be a little longer. So um, I'd rather cut it a little short than a little long, but I'm gonna sheet for right, right down the line. So I'm putting my thumb to guide to start this cut. And I'm being careful because these are sharp. Um, these saws are sharp. Get this cut started. And again, it's cutting when I pull. Now, I don't want to go deep there. And I don't want to go down this line at all because I can't see it from here. So I'm going to keep those teeth in the groove that I cut as I cut down this side. I want to keep the teeth in there. That groove has a name, by the way, that's called a kerf. I'm going to keep the teeth in the kerf. As I cut down the line. So I don't want to cut on the other side, like I said, which means I have to change the angle. I have to keep my hand going down more towards the floor to keep these teeth up, in the curve, but up. There. Now I have to cut the other side. Coming around here, I'll do the same thing. I'll get the teeth in the cut, in the curve. This is the reclaimed, over 100-year-old Douglas fir. It was, a, it was tanks, 30,000 gallon tanks for a long time. So it's been aged, and it's um, some of the best wood for spars. I'm off my line. I gotta, I gotta readjust this, this line. I can do it. There we go. All right, so now I'm all the way down. So now I'm going to cut across here horizontally. Cut the rest of this off. I really don't want it to break off. There it goes. That is not my best cut, but I think it'll do. Put it in there and see. All right. This is still, because the boat's upside down, because the angle's on the end, it won't just drop in there. It's still a little too long. So we're going to have to get one end in first and let it go down a ways, which brings it this way. 
and then we'll get it into this notch, and then we'll slide the whole piece until that end hits, and then we'll go up until it's a quarter inch up the whole way. I'll try to bend this in. Maybe. Oh, not bad. Um, now we're going to slide it my way because it's. We had to start it up too far that way. It's got about two inches to go. Um, the bow is sliding also. Not bad. That's about a quarter inch up. Head end. You look a little bit better. It's about a quarter inch there. Put some spring clamps on here. You can see it's sticking up about that quarter of an inch. Nice. There we go. So I'm just eyeballing that quarter of an inch, which isn't hard to do. And it's not a real critical amount anyway. That's it. This is a little too high. There we go. That's not the best joint I've cut. Um, there's a little bit of epoxy in that corner that can get cleaned out. And this needs to come up a little to actually touch the stem. Um, other than that, there's our chine cut. Now it just needs glued in, installed. There's several steps to that. We'll put glue lines on the boat so that when we, when we put epoxy in there, we're not, we know exactly where it goes and where it doesn't go. And um, put glue lines on the, pe on the piece. We'll glue up, then we'll glue up the ends, get a bunch of clamps out here, and we'll um, clamp it into place. Now we can clamp it into place with a bunch of clamps, or we can use the uh, plywood washers that we make and drywall screws. But we have plenty of small clamps, so I think we'll just C-clamp this into place. Um, put in screws if we have to. That's about it for today. Stay tuned. We'll do the uh, fasten this next time.